One day, a long time ago, you were surprised that I'd been tempted and you asked me whether I had ever yielded to temptation. Do you remember? And I replied to you, yes, as I could reply to you, because since then you were such an impoverished man that it was useless to open the most precious pearls of Christ's virtues under your eyes. You would not have understood their value and you would have mistaken them for stones as they were of such an exceptional size. Also in the desert, I replied to you, repeating the words, the meaning of the words I'd spoken to you that evening while going towards Gethsemane. If John or also Simon Zealot had repeated that question to me, I would have replied in a different manner because John is pure and he would not have asked with the malice with which you asked as you were full of malice. And although he is not unacquainted with life as John is, he had achieved that wisdom that can contemplate every episode without being upset in his ego. But they did not ask me whether I had yielded to temptations, to the most common temptation, to that temptation. Because in the irreproachable purity of the former, there are no memories of lust. And in the contemplative mind of the latter, there is so much light to see purity shine in me. You asked, and I replied to you, as I could, with that prudence that must never be separated from sincerity, both being holy in the eyes of God. That prudence that is like the treble veil stretched between the holy and the people to conceal the secret of the king. That prudence that adapts words to the person listening to them, to his intellectual power of understanding, to his spiritual purity and to his justice. Because certain truths mentioned to corrupt people become for them the object of laughter, not of veneration. Just a brief pause, a trivial pause. Jesus says, the treble veil, which is stretched between the holy and the people. A passing detail. I remember reading that somewhere, um, reading that in, in this book, I should say, and reading somewhere, um, one of the uh, Protestant biblical scholar wondering whether there was a double veil or a triple veil across the temple. And here Jesus, in passing, simply says there was a tri triple veil. And I was thinking I should write to that biblical scholar and tell him but what use would it be? But it's good that we can know these things that befuddle the greatest biblical scholars. I do not know whether you remember all those words. I do. And I am repeating them here, just now that we are both on the brink of the abyss. Because, but it is not necessary to say that. I said in the desert, in reply to the question that my first explanation had not satisfied, quote, the master never felt that he was superior to man to be the Messiah. On the contrary, knowing that he was the man, he wanted to be so in everything except sin. To be masters, it is necessary to have been pupils. I knew everything as God. My divine intelligence was able to make me understand also the struggles of man through intellectual power and intellectually. But one day, some poor friend of mine could have said, you do not know what it means to be a man and to have senses and passions. It would have been a just reproach. I came here to get ready, not only for my mission, but also for temptation. 
a satanic temptation. Because man could not have had power over me. Satan came when my solitary union with God ceased. And I perceived that I was the man with real flesh. Subject to the weaknesses of the flesh. Hunger. Tiredness. Thirst. Cold. I felt matter with its needs. Morale with its passions. And if through my will I subdued evil passions at birth, I allowed the holy ones to grow. Unquote. Do you remember those words? 